H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another session of Core Java. Uh, let us see in this particular session example of inheritance. Now, the examples that I'll take will be dependent on these particular points. We'll I'll, we'll see an example of uh, single inheritance. We see an example of multi-level inheritance. We see an example of hierarchical inheritance, and these three inheritance can be used in Java class files. We'll also see an example of uh, multiple inheritance example we'll see but uh, multiple inherit inheritance and hybrid inheritance is not supported by Java class files but are required in the concept of interface so we'll see that if we create a multiple inheritance with Java class file how does it show a compilation error so we'll first start with single inheritance so I already have my Eclipse opened and this I will create a new project called as session number 25 so let's click on the next button and click finish say no to the perspective change in this particular project called session 25 under the source folder right click I'm going to create a package uh, the package will be called as let's say single inheritance package now if you go to the basics of your single inheritance it means that a uh, single class file inheriting a parent class it is only one single class file which in inherits a single parent class that is what single inheritance means So let us go and see what is single inheritance right now. So inside this single inheritance package, I'm going to create a class, let's say as, for example, bikes. And I will going to call the main method so this bike class is supposed to be a parent class for example so i'll just write down bikes class is a parent class still now it does not become parent class because this class has not been inherited by any single class so this is a single uh, class which is bikes which will be inherited by another class single class file called let's say Yamaha Yamaha bike and then this bikes class will become parent now let's first understand and de uh, declare the properties of this class file so the properties can be let's say a bike will have price let's say So integer price okay I'll stick to default uh, access specifier for the variable declaration okay default uh, access specifiers can be used in the same package not across packages so there's a price tag for a bike so all bikes whether it is Yamaha or Suzuki the price tag will be there and I can create another var global variables of the bikes class the other thing that a bike will have is the wheels so number of wheels is three if two for a bike so I can use the static global variable out here 
and static let's say wheels <coughs> and you can define the value of wheels out here so static integer type uh, wheels is the global variable and I'm declaring the value of this I can declare the value of the global variables like this so once I declare the global variables value out here this cannot be changed okay now if I do not declare it and then that can be changed in the objects of the bikes class now when I am basically defining it okay this cannot be changed that becomes this is the final value then okay so these are the two global variables and I'll define two methods of the bikes class so methods also are properties of a class file so the first method can be your public static method and let's say the method is bikes will have brakes obviously void return type brakes I can define the breaks as a simple thing a simple set out statement stating that functionality of the brake will be defined breaks helps to stop the bike and uh, then another method I have to define which is common for any kind of bike so public non static method let's say uh, the non static method can be your uh, clutch every bike will have clutch and the functionality of the clutch is that I'll just define it in the sysout statement clutch helps to control the movement of the bike let's say this is the functionality of a clutch so every bike will have a price number of wheels will be 2 this becomes a final value cannot change it and these are the methods every bike will have brakes and clutch so I can create an object of the bikes class out here innumerable objects of the bikes class now why do you need to create a object of the bike class because we have non static global variables and non static methods so I'll call this as b1 is equal to new bikes and this is a normal thing out here that <coughs> sorry this will be a terminator sign and then you can initialize this particular initialize the object that is object number one of the bikes class reference by the reference variable b1 so I can write down directly I will use a CISO statement or rather directly I'll use b1 dot price and the price of the bike is for example uh, 20,000 and then I can use a CISO statement this is a common thing which we have seen earlier also b1 dot price and then we can use the static wheels directly I can call the static wheels if I have not given the value I can definitely would have called uh, and change the value and this is static and call it directly with the control space bar wheels now if I try to change the value to 3 okay I can change it still okay and I can use a CISO and I can write down call the wheels stuff and I can call the non static brakes method directly control spacebar brakes 
will print out the body part of brake and the non static clutch can be called non static clutch can be called by the b1 reference variable dot clutch not clone dot c l u a c h now this is initialization so if i run the particular class file or other than the object i will get the value at this we have seen this earlier 2003 bike helps to stop the bike or brakes rather helps clutch helps to control the movement and that is what i am greeting out here i'll change the spelling of brakes now if you see out here this is not the final value then that is the inference i can change the value the moment i make it final static then what happens is this value cannot be changed that is why it is showing you a syntax error final field bikes dot wheels cannot be assigned once you define it with the final keyword a uh, global variable can have final variable or a final static variable and now if you define uh, the value of the final global variable to 2 you cannot change it in the object and that is why it is showing you a syntax error a final static global variable can be used in the static field directly but if you have a final variable it has to be with the object so if i remove static the wheels has to be used with the object and the object is b1 dot wheels okay and then i have to remove this but it cannot be used like this already the value is already defined that is why you have a syntax error so what you can do is you can directly write down remove this and use siso b1 dot wheels so it will give you the directly value of final global variable wheels to 2 if i run the class file okay but if i give it a static as the keyword for a final variable i can use it without the b1 reference variable because static can be called directly without the object reference variable so then i can def definitely define it with just wheels and that's all and this will give me the value of 2 you can see that but if we do not give a final keyword and i give a value to it the inference is that you can still change the value and that is why when you put the value of wheels equal to 3 the console result shows you the value as 3 but yes declaration of a static variable can be like this that's not a problem so if i let's say do not want the wheels to be three that is illogical because bikes will have two wheels i can directly call wheels like this i will get the value as two and that's because this has been declared as two out here okay and similarly like this i can create another object of the bikes class so, so out i will create a differentiator which is nothing but a star sign to differentiate the answers in the console so i'll just copy this and paste it out here so this will be your initialization of the second object of object number two and this should be referenced by b2 otherwise it is going to show you a duplicate local variable and let's say the price of this v2 dot price is ten thousand and then i can get the console result with these wheels will remain at 2 because that has been defined at 2 and unless you want to change the value of wheels in this particular object initialization and then call the brakes and the clutch which is a non-static can be called with the b2 reference variable and that is why if i run the class file i will get the value of 10,002 brakes help to stop the bike this is a general scenario of a simple class file now let's say bikes will have their different kinds of back you have a suzuki brand for all suzuki which have bikes you have um, yamaha brand which has bikes we have ducati which is another band which belongs to, which makes bikes rather so let's say in this particular package i create one more class file and i call that class file as let's say yamaha and call the main methods click on finish 
Now let's say Yamaha is also a type of bike. Yamaha makes bikes rather. So let's say Yamaha wants to inherit the properties of the bikes class. That means the bike class will become the parent and the Yamaha will become the child. So for using for using the inheritance, that means Yamaha wants to inherit the bikes class. So using the inheritance concept, we can do that. But inheritance requires you to use a keyword and that keyword is extends. So you can use the extends keyword out here. Extends the class file that it wants to inherit. So it is the bike class, B-I-K-E-S. Careful with the spelling. Okay, now what you can do that? What happens is that Yamaha will inherit the properties of the bikes class. Okay, so what are the properties of the bikes class? These are the properties of the bikes class. And these are the properties of the bikes class. So this will be inherited by Yamaha automatically because the extend keywords is used. And let us use this then. So I can create an object of Yamaha and this object of Yamaha will inherit the properties of the object of the parent. That means it will inherit the property, uh, the properties of the parent object. So Yamaha, let's say Y1 is equal to new Yamaha. So automatically this is going to inherit this object of Yamaha will inherit the object of the bikes class. And in turn will actually inherit the properties of the bikes class. So you can basically call the price. Price is a non-static. So I can call directly with y1 dot price. I can give a value to this price. The value to this price, let's say, is let's say 30,000. Okay, I can use a CISO. So if you see out here, the price is shown in blue color. That means it is basically a global variable. Okay, now what I am calling, I am calling a non static global variable which is a property of bikes class now we don't see the price as a global variable inside this class called yamaha this price is nothing but a non-static global variable of bikes since yamaha is implement or other in not implementing wrong word it is inheriting the bikes class that is why i can use the properties of the bike class directly by creating an object so this object is actually inherited the parent object now or inherited the properties of the parent object and i can use now sys out y1 dot price or i can write down something like Yamaha is priced at concatenate this y1 dot price. Similarly, I can call the wheels which is non-static. Non-static can be called directly and it is have the value of 2. I want to change the value of 2, I can do it in this particular object. But why would I change the value of 2? Because bikes do have three, uh, two, 2 wheels. So the static part can be called directly control spacebar. And we will see wheels out here. But if we call the wheels out here, then I have to define the value of it. I don't want to disturb the value of 2. So I can directly call sys out. And can write down Yamaha has concatenate this with wheels. That is the static global variable present in the bikes class has two concatenate this with wheels that is what it is going to return so this is a static global variable of the bikes class now i can basically call wheels like this too i can call this like s y s o u t control space bar I can just copy this, paste it inside the println argument. Wheels is a static global variable of the bikes class. I can call like this. That is also possible. You see the option also coming out the moment I put dot. 
okay or i can call the wheels static global variable which is a global variable inside the bikes class i can call it like this i can just copy it for reference and i can put here yamaha 2 and why i can put yamaha because yamaha object has inherited the properties of the bikes object because of the inheritance effect so i can put yamaha dot wheels 2 